शुभ भी जो है एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एंड टू दीरीज कॉन्फ्रेंस इन द आर्लियर थ्री सेस्ड समर्ड टॉपिक्स नॉट वेल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड because the we were taken from uh, different branches and we can call it general chemistry a few preliminary topics but today session 4 onwards we will see the classified topics for example today we will going to start chemical kinetics to be followed by thermodynamics then quantum mechanics and so on and as you know that uh, videos of longer duration are usually not preferred so i have split it the uh, topics in four or five parts so please bear with me with smaller uh, videos uh, today my session is part 1 on chemical kinetics concept booster and today's question type would be quick review type true and false okay so uh, we have a few aims as you know but particularly and more most importantly to support you my students my friends my colleagues uh to prepare the students for je bsc chemistry honors iit jam tsr lc net get tet etc so let us start today's session true and false concept poster on chemical kinetics first question reaction have the dimensions of concentration dependent factor of course it's true it looks like the rate is by definition minus dc dt so c is molarity and t is second so m by s concentration dependent factor the next question all rate constants of the same type so let us see the dimension of a rate constant but uh, as you know that it's a false statement how because uh, the rate law looks like rate equal to k c to the power n so rate is m s to the power minus 1 But k c to the power n is k m to the power n, where m is molarity or concentration. So uh, if you equate, uh, then we get k is m s inverse by m to the power n. So finally, it is m to the power one minus n s minus one. So of course, it depends on n. It's not that rate constants are the same, of uh, same dimension for all. So it depends on part. and the next immediate question the units of a first order rate constants are second inverse so if you just put n equal to 1 here first order so you will get only second so obviously that statement is true step okay so next question rate constants depend on temperature of course it's a true statement because rate itself depends on temperature and that is manifested uh, through the term k rate constant Uh, and k depends on the nature of the reaction as well but on temperature too right so it's a true statement rate constants are never negative yeah rate constants are never negative true because uh, uh, r is minus dc dt equal to k should be the power n now dc dt itself is negative rate of consumption so with time increasing time c decreases so it's a negative term the derivative and minus sign is there so the left hand side is positive right hand side of course must be positive so k is uh, positive and never been negative. next question every species that appear in the rate law must be a reactant or product in a reaction so it seems to be a uh, right but no it actually falls because a catalyst a catalyst may appear which is neither a reactant nor a product right next question 2a plus b gives product now which one is true dna dt is 2 dnb dt or 2 dna dt equal to dn people gets often confused uh because here you see that the rate of consumption dna dt and dnb dt so from stoichiometry uh, the rate of consumption of a should be twice that of uh, b so that means dna dt should be twice that of dnb dt so option a is the right answer okay let us see yeah option a is the right answer next rate law of an elementary reaction a plus b or b in an ideal system must be r equal to k a 
Yes, it is true because it is an elementary reaction and the stoichiometric coefficient 1, 1, they are actually the molecularity with respect to A and B. So, we can write K into A into B if it is an elementary reaction. So, it is a true statement, but it may happen that if the reaction is next question, that if the reaction is composite reaction, then this may not be true, right? The molecularity may not be the order. So, the next question might not be like that. So, it is again a true statement, okay? Got my point? Thank you. Two reactions, 1 and 2, each of order n equal to 1, but the rate constant K2 is greater than K1. So, it necessarily follows that rate of the second reaction must be greater than that of the first. So, uh, on the first glance, it may seem to be a true statement, but it is a false statement quite logically because rate is given K into A, first order. So, of course, it depends on K, but it depends on concentration of A as well. So, it is not necessarily true. The rate would be greater. If K is greater, it depends on this. The next question, if you know the rate law of a reaction, you can deduce what the mechanism must be. No, it is not true, false, because uh, after getting the experimental results, we can theoretically propose mechanisms and that can be more than one which fits the experimental outcomes. That does not mean that that is the only mechanism the reaction is following. So, the statement is not true. But the reverse, if you know the mechanism of the reaction, including the values of the elementary rate constants, of course, you can find the rate law. So, once a mechanism is proposed, then you can find out the rate law, but not the reverse. So, the next statement is true. Okay. The next question, the half life is independent of initial concentration only for fast order reaction. Okay. If you follow, uh, in fact, in the next session, you will uh, follow it in more details. That half life, uh, this statement is true. This is only for first order reaction that half life is independent of initial concentration. In other cases, it is I, either it is proportional or inversely proportional that we will see later on. The next question the pre exponential factor in Arrhenius equation has the same units for all reactions. Again, this is a false statement because very simply. K is A e to the power minus E by R T. Now, E to the power minus E by R T, that E is capital e is activation energy, and that is an exponential quantity, so unit less. So, K is equal to A by dimension and numerically equal. Uh, so, uh, mass uh, uh, K the, with having different dimensions for different reaction, A would also have different dimensions for different reactions, right? So, I uh, had a few questions on catalysis. In homogeneous catalysis, the catalyst does not appear in the rate law. No, a catalyst may appear, I mean, must appear in the rate law. So, the statement is false. But the next question you follow a catalyst does not appear in overall reaction. Of course, it is true because in overall reaction, they cancel out left and right. So, it is true. In homogeneous catalysis, doubling the catalyst concentration will not change the rate because in the first question we have seen that it appears in the rate law. So, it affects and you can easily show that if you double the catalyst concentration, the rate will change, okay. So, the statement is false and the last one in this slide, in homogeneous catalyst, catalysis, the catalyst does not appear in any step of mechanism. How it can be true? Because if it does not appear in any step of the mechanism, how it appears in the rate law? So, this is again going to be a false step. Okay. One more from catalysis the presence of a homogeneous catalyst cannot change the equilibrium composition of the system. No, a catalyst can change the equilibrium composition, but what it cannot change that follows from the next question. Uh, and uh, the presence of a homogeneous catalyst cannot change the equilibrium constant. Because equilibrium constant is a thermodynamic quantity and, and a catalyst just accelerates the reaction, okay. So, uh, if you expect that I can uh, produce more product by using a catalyst, you will be wrong because uh, to get more product that means you are playing with the equilibrium constant and that you can, okay. Uh, it only uh, accelerates the reaction. So, the statement is 
true. The next question, activation energies are never negative. Okay, this is a, a true statement, uh, sorry, false statement. It can be negative. And if it is negative, then you see the next question, rate constants always increase as temperature increases. This is valid from the equation that if activation energies are positive, but if it is negative, which is uh, though rare, but it is possible, then uh, it is a false statement. Okay. A reaction of order 3 by 4 will not go to completion and it is a false statement because as we know and the next session actually we will discuss in more detail uh, through some equation that reactions of order n greater than equal to 1 do not go to come. So, for less than n uh, order it goes to completion. So, the above question is a false question. Next question, since concentration of reactant decrease with time, concentration decrease with time obvious. So, rate of reaction always decreases as time increases. Okay. So, uh, this is false statement. How? Uh, one simple answer is that that we know for zero order reaction, R is minus dA dt is k a to the power 0, that means 1. So, R is k, that means rate is constant. So, with time, the rate does not change. Okay. But what about the other uh, possibility? So, let us see that dr dt rate, if you differentiate rate with respect to time, then it gives you k n a to the power n minus 1 into dA dt. Okay. So, you are differentiating the left hand side and right hand side of this equation. But dA dt is actually minus k a to the power n again from this first line. So, we are putting dA dt is minus k a to the power n. So, finally, is minus k n a to the power 2 n minus 1. Now, a to the power 2 n minus 1 is always positive. n it depends on whether it is positive or negative, the overall sign because the negative sign is there and k is always positive. Okay. So, we see that the quantity is negative if n is positive. Okay. But there is a but, but it is positive or negative n. So, the whole right hand side is positive if n itself is negative. Now, what does it mean that DRTT is positive? That means with increasing time, R is also increasing. The derivative is positive, it means that. So, R increases with increasing time. So, the statement gives you the opposite impression that it always decreases, right. So, what we get the answer? The statement is false uh, because false for n less than equal to 0. So, you uh, explore this uh, with some patience and time, uh, it is a tricky but it's a good answer. So, thanks for watching our next video, session 5, it's coming soon and that would be on chemical kinetics part 2 and understanding through equations. So, please keep on watching, do subscribe, encourage your friends to subscribe, to watch and please, please to suggest me how I can improve the quality of the videos, etc. Whatever you like, you can make comments in the YouTube channel. Thank you very much once.